What's up, everybody? Yesterday, I was on a podcast with James McFadden on the Crypto for Life YouTube channel. He graciously hosted me. What a wonderful host. I really think this is a guy you should be following. He's a good guy, good spirits, good intentions, good information, um, and really good hosting skills. So this is the full interview. You can actually follow him and subscribe to him using the link below. I really suggest you do that or watch the full interview, see what you think about him, and then subscribe to him. Uh, but this is the full interview. Prepare to sit down with a nice coffee for an hour. We talk about, you know, my history, my background, and all that kind of stuff, all the way through my journey, uh, even into the documentary, and all kinds of stuff. Really, really good podcast. It gives you a little bit more of an insight into me personally than I would usually give. Um, so, enjoy. I have, to, I have to start up by asking you this, my friend. Lewis Jackson. Now, when I hear that name, I'm thinking of like a relative. You know, Jackson is a commonly like, you know, I'm sure you get this all the time. Lewis Jackson. That sounds like an African-American. Any, anybody ever tell you that? Um, yeah, yeah, actually. <laughs> uh, you know, I lived I lived in the uh, in the States for four years. I lived in, in Arkansas. I went to college in Arkansas. I didn't know that. Um, and. Yeah, I got that all the time from like the, you know, the football team, the basketball team. They ended up just being my, you know, being my friends. So it's just like, that was my, the, the crowd that adopted my name is the crowd that was kind of my friend, you know, my friend group That's at so college. Funny. So yeah. I got that a lot. It's funny because I could see if somebody was looking at a sheet and they're like, we're going to pick all the best ball players, but I want Lewis Jackson. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> I want Lewis that's Jackson. Right. <laughs> that's funny. Yeah. Well, Lewis, man, look, it's an honor. I've been following you for a while. Um, I'm going to give you a little bit of background about myself because we didn't, we haven't had a formal introduction because, you know, we kind of got started yeah. right on time. Uh, been in crypto since uh, 2017. Um, it retired my wife and I about four years ago. We've been kind of traveling all over uh, the U.S. Um, one year here, one year in Hawaii, one year in uh, Northern California in wine country. Then we came over to Vegas. It's, just, it's been an incredible ride. Uh, I started this channel maybe about 12 months ago. Uh, my background is professional basketball. Um, I used to speak. I was mm. on some of the biggest stages around the world, owned several businesses in California, and now uh, here back in Vegas where I do some business things uh, with a partner of mine, Mike Owens. And, uh, yeah, it's just been an incredible ride. So with that being said, my friend, I've been following you for a while. I saw – I noticed that you were on with Fruition and those guys, Fruition Productions, which is Chris and Maya, you know, amazing people. I actually interviewed them as well. Um, had a lot of great things to say about you, so I'm looking forward to that finished product. Uh, before I get in that, let me just ask you uh, a little bit about yourself. Give us your background uh, prior to crypto, and then I'll kind of move forward with those questions if you don't mind. Uh, yeah, so well, let's go. Let's go back. I've always been a a lover of sports. Okay, I'm kind of like a a natural athlete, I guess. Oh wow! Okay. Um, a, a, anything with a ball, I can just kind of pick up. So oh, wow. I've, I've been. I've been I've been very much involved in, but it, basically every sport at school, and um, you know, I played very high level squash. Do you know Do you know what squash yeah, is? Exactly. Yes. Yes. Yeah, right. yeah. I played high level squash. Um, kind of like, uh, and the funny thing is, when I was twelve, playing at very high level, um, I, I was like, ah, I don't like this because I have to travel all around the UK to play these tournaments, and I'm only twelve. I don't really want to do all of this. <laughs> right. And then a year later, I picked up golf. Um. And that ended up taking me around the whole world, um, and happily so. So, um, wow. you know, that's why I went to college in the states. I had a golf scholarship, um, and but it really at age seventeen, I had the, you know, the choice: do I, do I turn pro? Because I was, you know, I was at the level where I could turn pro at seventeen, um, or do I get my education and, you know, get a degree and I'll continue to play golf and see if America makes me better at golf, kind of right. thing. Right. Um, I put my four years in, ended up playing more basketball than I played golf. Wow. Um, wow. But, but maintained, maintained my scholarship somehow. Um, and then moved to Central America. And then I, I basically had, you know, five to six years off golf. Um, didn't play a single round and, you know, was living in all everywhere around the world and getting married and having wow. a kid, <laughs> oh, wow. all of that kind of stuff. Um, and basically as that journey's gone on you know you you mentioned 2017 2018 earlier you know at that time um i really just found myself in a situation where like what am i doing with my life <laughs> like right. like I've, I've, I've had no job that i've actually held down absolutely zero jobs that i've actually enjoyed except from when i'm like in my spare time trying to build a business right um 
because I've, I've, you know, I, I just kind of have built this real detest for the nine to five. And, uh, you know, I couldn't get out. I couldn't get out of it until, you know, you, you kind of get a break from it. Um, and then I, I, I got lucky because I didn't have much money in, in kind of 2017, 2018. So when the prices went up a little bit, even for me, I was just like, oh, I'll just take it out because I won. <laughs> you know, I'm, 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 the type, I'm the type of guy that goes to the, the casino with $10. That's funny. <laughs> you know, you know and, and if I lose the $10, well, it's like, oh, I just paid $10 for the fun of the casino. Right, exactly. Um, so I was very risk averse at that time. Um, and so the prices went up and I just exited. Like I left. I came to realize that that was the peak. Wow. Um, and it all crashed from there. And it was like, I, I kind of learned by accident about how you shouldn't hold on too long kind of thing. Right. Um, and then from there, I was like, well, loads of people just made loads of money there. I, 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 this might be my, an avenue out of this situation that I'm in. Um, and so I just decided from there, I was like, okay, so there's cycles to this thing and it goes down, it continues to go down for many years. And then another opportunity to kind of get in arises. Right. And so I took that opportunity to kind of really just dive in learning. I, I think I like really held on to the Fibonacci retracement tool right, that was right. like my thing right um and so i held on to that all the way down in the bear market and then you come to uh, november the 1st 2021 and i was like i'm so into this right now that i get so many friends asking me about crypto they're like right. constantly on my case right. i'm like well i can explain it to 10 people individually it's going to take me five hours right or i can make a youtube video and they can just watch the link oh i see um and I, there's something about the way I explain things or the way I approach things. It wasn't just the 10 people that watched. It ended up being, you know, a few hundred. Then it turned into a few thousand. Wow. Um, and then I was like, oh, wait, I just got monetized on YouTube and there's there's revenue with this as well. <laughs> like I was doing this to share it with my friends. And, and, and you know, as a lover of business, and I, I've always been kind of hustling to, to make a business for myself because right. of my detest for the nine to five. Right. Um, I realized... Oh, I can do. I can do this. I can do this as my job. I can, uh, you know, I can. This can take over my life, and I'm, I'm happy for it too because it's my own thing. I'm not right. working for anyone. Right. Um, and you know, I got a, a nice break, and that was from a multitude of people. You know, I have to sh shout out people like T T's Crypto Spot. You know, incredibly, incredibly intelligent guy who came came at things for me in a way that I was like. Oh, I get that. Like, oh, uh, T made me realize actually how a transaction happens, like how a payment, how payments work. That was, that's all T. Like he, he the way right. he explained it, I was like, oh, I get it now. And I can, I can reword that because I can, I can explain it in a way that I know old me would have got. Right. And so I was explaining things in this, in this, you know, revised way. And then you had, you know, Brad Kimes who, who, who saw a load of my short form content and kept re retweeting. Wow. And all of wow. this time, you know, I ended up being like the fastest growing crypto channel in all of crypto. It was ridiculous. So, I went so, from so, so you had, so you, you got on, let me see if I can kind of uh, uh, follow you on this. So you, you want to find a way to let all your friends know about crypto and that turned into, wait a minute, I can make money at this. And then all of a sudden you realize this is actually a business. You treat it like a business. Uh, you're very good at what you do. And then all of a sudden, Brad Kimes noticed you and started retweeting your videos. And that got you the crazy momentum, which is why you were one of the fastest growing channels. Yeah, it, it, wow. it, it completely gave me the momentum. Yeah. Wow. And, um, you know, and it, it, these people have been in the in the content game for so long. Yeah. It's kind of yeah. like it's almost like you really know you're doing something right. Or you're really you really know that something's about to happen when you start getting seen. Well, you, you know, so funny um, as, a, as a future, I mean, as a fellow YouTuber, um, when I started this, the passion for me um, after I had made it and, um, you know, we had, you know, made a bunch of money at this. Um, and um, I had a lot of people saying, James, you should share this with other people. And I said, OK, great. So I, I'm kind of relating to your story. And then I did it just for the passion of wanting to to be um, to give people something that was honest, um, authentic, uh, no shilling. No, none of that stuff. And and so and the fact that I've always been really good at connecting and building relationships with people when I used to speak on stage. So by being authentic, 
um, I was actually co-hosting with a friend of mine. And the funny thing about it, Lewis, is that I didn't really have an agenda. Like, I didn't know. It was just, you know, when I hit this button, I would tell people, I would just start talking like you, just kind of off the top of my head about whatever I was passionate about with crypto. When I, when I hit the end, uh, when I ended that button, I was so exhausted because of all the energy and passion that I left into the stream. And then one of my buddies, Mike Owens asked me about, a, a, I don't know, maybe a few weeks ago or so, or maybe a month ago, he goes, James, what are you trying to do with your channel? Because, you know, I didn't really know what short videos were. I did, I never had a pre-recorded video. I was just always doing lives. So I really didn't get it. And then all of a sudden I had a guy hit me a couple of days ago and go, Hey, uh, James, you know, DAI, digital asset investor. I'm like, yeah, I know who that is. Guy, uh, he's, he's talking about you on the show. And all of a sudden he started posting my content. Mm -hmm. And so it's amazing when you just, I love what you just said, when you just stand in your lane and you're just being authentic. Uh, and I always say never sacrifice integrity for growth. It just happens. And that's just amazing. I love hearing that story, man. That's incredible. Well, well, look at it this way as well. You know, you, you, you'll know this from, from basketball and, and, everything that you've kind of talked about nothing nothing just happens right yeah you, like you don't just you don't just get drafted no <laughs> <laughs> like there's there's 15 right. years before that point where that's you've right. just been like grinding that's right um and so you you make your own luck so like you know in terms of like the channel strategy at the, at the beginning right. when i realized there were more people than my friends watching wow. um and and this isn't this isn't you know this isn't anything I'm telling people to do, but I'm telling you exactly how I did it. And I, I will not like hide any of that. Right. I did three videos a day for three months. Wow. All of that. And I was getting less than 200 views. Now, were they pre so, these were pre-recorded, of course, right? Oh, pre-recorded, not live. And, and, then, and, so, then, and then about how long? In a way, videos? eight to 12 minutes. Yeah, that's that's what everyone's telling me I need to do. Right. Yeah, I mean, uh, but this was an intense amount of work. Wow. Um, I mean, enough, so much work that I collapsed. Like I actually had a had what the doctors called it a seizure. Oh um, wow! Wow. I, I mean, I was unhealthily obsessed. Um, but look what it did. It put so much of my content out. Some of it's going to hit. Brad Kimes is going to see some of it. Wow. You know. And and it and it grows from there. It's not healthy to to do it like that. But like I do have that side of me where I can get absolutely obsessed. You sound and like I think, you sound uh, like you get really passionate about whatever it is, sports or anything. That's just a lot of passion. That's what it sounds like. Exactly. Yeah. Um. You know, and that, that, there's good and bad with that because right. you know I can't think about anything else when I'm thinking about what I'm trying to think about. <laughs> right. Um. And so you know, it there's there's certainly strategy to it, and and that's really led me down in the background here. Like this is the first time I'll, I'll have said it online, but you know, we're, we're building out an agency right now for completely separate to like my channel or anything. It won't be, won't be talked about on the channel. Oh, wow. Um, that, that really leans into, you know, content strategy, video production, but within, you know, FinTech and blockchain. Oh, nice. Um, nice. And within that space. And, you know, I, I really do feel like I've learned so much just about marketing in, yeah. in this whole thing where there is there is value there. Um, wow. So what kind of depending on whatever your vision is for your channel, don't it's not linear. It's not like it's not like your channel just goes this direction. You'll, you'll go this direction and then there'll be opportunities over there and opportunities right. over there right. that you didn't realize fit your skill set. But then you think about you, you kind of retrospectively think you're like oh yeah i did pick up that ability to grow an audience oh yeah i did i did do high level video production oh i did do hosting i did do lives like you've got this you, you could in a year's time you know be sitting on fox news doing a, like as an anchor or something wow, like you don't crazy. know you don't know how this can how this can go but you're building skills along the way um and so really like i guess this is my advice to you for like the channel if you wanted it to go somewhere, right. don't necessarily think the channel is the place where it goes. It could be any, you can go in any direction. Like me thinking about having an agency, it's like, that's not my, that's not a channel. That's yeah. not growing a channel to a million subscribers. That's right. something completely different. Completely or different yeah. My involvement in tokenization of real world assets. Like right. I didn't think any of that was going to happen, but here I am. Wow. Um, and so think, be open-minded with like the journey of your channel. Because it doesn't have to just be like, oh, YouTube, 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 social media. Right. It can expand to, to in ways that you do, you wouldn't have imagined.
That's amazing. No, I, I love that uh, that concept and, and just uh, your vision and really just your passion uh, for what you're doing. And uh, it's really uh, uh, has have me thinking as far as that eight to 12 minute video and just a lot more things. Me and my friend Mike Owens, we're actually starting something very special here in Las Vegas as well. I can't really say everything that it is, but it's kind of it's just amazing when you start doing something and then you start realizing, oh, my gosh, because my background after sports was speaking. And uh, I would travel mm -hmm. the world speaking. And so I, yeah, I had this gift and I just didn't know how YouTube would fit into it. So now we're exploring other things as well. So um, but I do need to pay more attention to uh, short videos and things like that. I just always did lives and that was always my thing up until this point. So, yep. uh, but no. Well, I, look, as, as, a, as a base, as a foundation, having having lives and having a community that watches all your all your lives is so powerful. Wow. Oh, my goodness. And, and you've got the you've got the skill set as well. Like I, I'll, I can help you. I'll, I'll I'll help guide that kind of strategy. Oh, I'd love sure. to hear about yeah, it. Before, before we get off um, here, I want to make sure I get your. Uh, I'll, I'll share. I'll message over my. Um, what did it call? Um, I got it right here. My uh, what is? What do you use? Um, oh, WhatsApp. I make sure I send you my WhatsApp yeah. information so that we stay in contact. Sure. Yeah. So yeah. so Lewis, yeah, I'm excited for you. Yeah, yeah, I'm excited for you. I mean, it's people like you that. Um, motivate me and and um you know have me start thinking outside the box and it, it's funny because even before we connected i was a big fan of the show um i can see that you're growing you know uh, uh leaps and bounds and now to hear that you're doing things behind uh the scenes in, in what you're saying with your with your new uh, venture that's something i was doing so it just it's just really exciting to see uh, someone else on that level yeah um now i have a question that i know um everyone's uh waiting and we have some people that showed up here and, and by the way guys congratulations showing up at 2 a.m uh my time yeah. that's absolutely, absolutely incredible um that's that type of support crypto for life family i appreciate you guys in a major way um so we know that you uh right, right around the time that you got into crypto what attracted you to xrp because i've heard you talk about xrp very passionately um it's you know you see, seem like a very brilliant individual um and so i want to start off why uh, what attracted you to XRP? And then um, why do you feel other people aren't getting it the way you get it? Because, you know, one of the things I always uh, I have a lot of friends uh, that you know, when we, we talk is you got some of the most brilliant people in crypto. I mean, these guys have made millions. Some of these guys have made, you know, claim they made billions. And uh, you can see they got massive uh, uh, audiences and so forth. But when it comes to XRP, some people just don't get it. What attracted you, uh, attracted you to it? And why do you think other people don't get it? Well, you know, I I think I I think this is reminiscent of a lot of people's stories, uh, and it kind of revolves around COVID. You know, there, there's this time where you're like, you're a sheep, and I think everyone fell into that, has fallen into that, and been just been in that. That's like what you felt like your your default existence was. Right. And then COVID comes around, you're like, wait a second, you can't tell you can't tell me to stay in my house, <laughs> like. <laughs> Right. That's like North Korea. Yeah. Like this is we're not in North Korea. And then and then you know you have you have the alt season that happened where everything didn't take off but some of them did. Right. Um you know around the the you know the the SEC time where they came after Ripple then. It's kind of like wait a why are they why are they trying to dull this down? And then you know one of the first questions I asked was what well, what other companies got shot down like this by the SEC? And then you realize that actually it looked more like a rite of passage to become a massive company That's right. than a negative thing. Wow. Um, and then, you know, you've got COVID, you've got the, oh, it was made in a lab, oh, it was deliberately made. Oh, wait, what's this rabbit hole? What's this rabbit hole? And you end up right. down the rabbit holes and you realize the whole world revolves around money. That's right. And the whole system is ineffective. And there's this technology that solves the inefficiencies. It's, it's I mean, it's a very like, I think it's a natural journey that you take once you uncover, you lift the veil. Right. So you lift the veil off the world and you're like, whoa, <laughs> this is this is really different. Um, and of course, that was helped along by, oh, I've just found XRP. I'm going to talk about XRP and it gets more views. I'm like, oh, there's other people that are interested in this. So I'm going to dive in deeper so I know it more, so I can explain it more. Right. Um, this, you know, undeniably, there's a factor of more people are watching this. I'm going to talk about it more. But also that's a blessing in disguise for me because I get to learn about XRP more. Um, even on days where I'm not motivated to, I've got an audience that want to hear about it. So I'm right. still talking about it. Right. Um, you know, it's just like just like basketball, just like sport. It's, it's raining outside when it's when I want to play golf. 
if I'm the one that goes out to play golf in the rain, I'm the one that gets better when everyone else is inside. Right. Absolutely. So, you know, so it was an element of that for me in XLP where, you know, put thousands of hours into this thing, just, just understanding. And, and not, it's not just XRP. It's like the, it, all the topics in the periphery where, you know, oh, we're looking at, oh, this Ethgate thing, this corruption in the SEC, Bill right. Henman. Right. Um, and it all just seems a bit too suspicious. Very, very. Yeah. You know, so I, I don't know. I'm saying that I'm trying to say that as objectively as possible. But right. in, in reality, you know, these things are all con- like these are real. They're not. It's not just a, a speculation. I mean, I mean the, thing, the thing is, L- Lewis, is what other asset has that type of dynamic, that type of scandal and this and cor- I mean, it's just, you know, it, it's just it's just crazy. And so there has to be something there. Like why XRP out of all the coins that they could have done this to? Why XRP? <laughs> yeah. And, you know, I love there's a story that, I, you know, I've spent a lot of time with Molly Elmore. Yeah. She's she's, oh, she's unbelievable. Amazing. She's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> she's an unbelievable person. Yeah. Um, she told me the story about how she got into XRP and, you know, she, she went to a, a crypto course, like she attended a crypto course and, and they gave her a list of assets to, to learn about like as, as homework. Okay. Um, so it was like Bitcoin, Ethereum, you know, USDT. And she was going down the list and she was like, okay, I'll take this list home. going to look at it on the internet. And there was a discrepancy between the lists that she was given. So one list um, was the one that they gave her at the course. Okay. And the other list was the one on the internet. The one on the internet had another token on there in the top like six or seven. And it wasn't mentioned on the course checklist. Wow, someone left it out. Wow. And she went, why is that one not on there? <laughs> why, why is XRP not on the one that you told me to, right. to, to, to come home and learn about? And they said, oh, that's the banker's coin. Don't worry about it. That's what every, every okay, that makes sense. And she and she and she with her with her you know her smarts her genius right, right. she was like wait a second I I should probably focus on that one then if you know if follow the the road less travel right um and obviously that's brought her where she is today and and you know I think her life has changed in ways that she didn't expect either from this whole thing right um and so you know in terms of like what people don't see um. The information's out there for everyone. Right. I think naturally what you get is people who can who can see it and people who can't. And the difference between those two is the question why. Exactly. I I, I truly believe this that my neighbor across the road that I'm looking at right there. Um I know she's a very big like, I need to get my my jabs, I need to get boosted, I need to have like my 59th jab because then I won't get COVID. And I did get COVID, but it was better than I would have had it if I didn't have the jabs. Right, right, right. That kind of mentality. Right, right. Um, and the only separation between myself and I think a lot of people and her is that she hasn't asked why. Like, mm. why Why do we have to take this? There's, there's, there's no question. I think the natural progression is if you ask why, like, why is this happening? And then you actually take action to, to figure it out. Absolutely. You end up in the same place as we're in now. That makes sense. Um, so the only difference is like that action on the, on the question. Why I think, right. I, I, you know, and people just won't see it because they don't ask why. That's right. Brilliant. Brilliant. The next question I have is John Deaton, uh, running against Elizabeth Warren. How big is that for, I won't say XRP, but just for crypto in itself, uh, to have someone, uh, of that status or stature, um, you know, for the people, uh, wanting to, um, you know, obviously, um, you know, expose the truth. How big is that for crypto? Well, I think it's, I think it's important if if we're t- if we are to get anywhere in terms of real world adoption. This is the kind of thing that needs to happen. I'm not saying he's like fundamental in in that happening. He's he's part of the process, right? Um, you know, there's and there's thousands of processes that have to happen. Um, so not, I wouldn't I wouldn't place so much emphasis on John Deaton being the savior for crypto. No, not at all. But what I will say is that it's a he's a it's nice to know that someone pro crypto could be in that position. Right. I'll say that much. Right. right. And I think for me, it's not about whether John wins or loses. It's just the fact that he's challenging Elizabeth Warren and that we're able to see that. And I think, you know, I think it's just questioning everything that's being done on that side. So I know I'm definitely excited about it. Yep. Um, when it comes to uh, Ripple, uh, what, you know, obviously you think or, or do you think they're a, a reputable company and why? Um, 
Yeah, <laughs> I mean, I've got I I have got contacts that work in and around Ripple. Oh, nice. Um, and so, you know, I've heard about things that they're doing that I'm not I'm not able to share because it was in confidence. But okay. you know, these the, the the way that they're acting is like a a a, a blue chip company, not like a crypto currency company right so you know there is this double-edged sword of of you know do ripple actually care about xrp do they only care about it as a software do they care about the price you know we have to understand that they've created this technology but they're also a business that operates in a fi in the financial world um just as much as they operate in the blockchain world right and so they're going to do things like um, become more centralized as a as a company. They're going to be they're going to be more compliant with the laws that are in place, right? Um, rather than you looking at some weird altcoin that's just like, like I bought a token today. This is completely well, it's, it's relevant in a way. I bought a token today that is so low cap that I put a tiny amount into the coin and uh -huh. and the price moved. <laughs> Oh, that's funny. Like, that's, yeah, yeah like the first time I've ever manipulated the market. That's so funny. <laughs> um, and so we're not operating with a company like that, right? And and we don't want to be, right? By the exactly. way, like we don't we don't want it decentralized enough to where that kind of stuff happens. Um, and obviously, there's conspiracy you can go conspiracies you can go down, but you know, the, this is a proper company, is what I'm saying. They're not they're not crypto first. They're not on the they're, they're certainly leaning away from the craziness of the decentralized crypto world and leaning certainly into let's get this regulated we're a serious company like google like apple um we just have a technology underneath that we use on block on the blockchain i right. think really that's how they position themselves and i and i think if you're looking for kind of a company to to excel and become in you know a top 10 company in the world they have to do that that's right. Like they're not, they're not gonna they're not gonna get to that situation being a being a crypto first company. It's Absolutely. just not happening, especially at this time of of where we are in, in adoption. Yeah, I love that so, perspective. Yeah, you you really have to embrace the double edge of that sword. Yes, it's going to feel like centralization at times. Um, and why are we going in accordance with the law when they've done so much wrong to us? But if you really want the success of that company and therefore the success of the assets underneath. Then you, this just got it's a necessary evil in a way. Yeah, no, I love that. I love that. Bobby Townsend says, What other company, crypto company, has taken high end professionals in the financial industry under their wing and sent them back uh, to spread the word? Of, yeah, no, no, definitely. Yeah, and that's, yeah. An, that's another thing. Like all of those top level people, like the highest level people, like Rosie Rios and, yeah, and you know, exactly. there's a whole bunch of them. Like, why are they involved? Exactly. <laughs> like, yeah. you, you know, there's no other company like that. Right. Like, there's a few, like, like Quant. Quant is like that. Quant has taken really like a real world current system integration approach, um, and they're not they're not really like they they're not Quant token first. Um, H bars like that as well. Right. Um, and actually, funny enough, look at those. Those are utility assets. <laughs> absolutely, yeah, absolutely. Funnily enough. I guess one of the biggest things um, on people's mind, and probably one of the biggest complaints, and I'm sure you see it all the time, XRP's price. And it's been frustrating the heck out of people. Obviously, I know what I hold. I understand I'm a student of the game like you are. Uh, but sometimes I have to be facetious and ask this question, right? Um, the price. Right now, a lot of people are frustrated. You see, you know... Um, Bitcoin right now at 66,000 or something like that. Well, XRP was, you know, pretty much the same price when, when uh, Bitcoin was 33,000. So people are like, it's not moving. What's going on? Uh, kind of explain, if you would, um, why do you think, and I know the answer to this because a lot of people looking at market cap versus, you know, utility and institutional adoption when that comes. But why do you think the price is where it's at? And where do you see XRP in the short term and long term? And I think that's the that's the biggest problem is everyone has a short term mindset instead of the long term mindset. But go ahead and explain that if you can. Um, well, I think it's ultimately in, in one sentence you need less tokens in circulation perfect it just like you look you look at xrp as an asset and the technology that you know that's underneath it, it takes three to five seconds to to send a transaction 
there are too many tokens for the speed of the asset. Right. So when you look at on-demand liquidity, yes, that's really exciting. Yes, there's clients of on-demand liquidity, but it's really not going to be an astronomical price driver. It just it just can't it just can't be. It's just the the right. coins are taken out of circulation too fast and they're just put straight back. Right. Um, the only thing you need at this at this point is two things. You need on-demand liquidity to be a product of ripples that they're, they're actively pushing, which is called Ripple Payments now, rather than ODL. Um, that's growing. Right. And 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 you know, I heard a number. Who did I hear this number from? It was like Monica Long um, at Ripple. Right. She she was saying, you know, the total amount of on-demand liquidity transactions that have gone through is like a billion dollars. I was like, uh, when I heard that, I realized, ah, oh, we haven't even started. Even like, started. we haven't even started yet. Yeah. So, a billion dollars, just for context, is one one thousandth of what the Bank of England does every day. Jeez. And that is the lifetime amount of o of ODL that had happened at that point. That was maybe like a year ago. Right. So it will have grown since then. Um, but they're still pushing that product. Like that's still a product, that primary product that they're offering their clients. Um, you know, maybe second to CBDCs, but I, I don't know how that how that looks for them. Right. Um, and so, as long as they continue to push on-demand liquidity, so that the tokens are being used, so there is a utility, and everyone's seeing the benefit of that utility. The the thing you need after that point is removal of tokens from circulation. And so the way that you get that isn't from the three to five seconds removal of, of assets in circulation. You get that from a company going, hang on a sec, this is really growing. Like lots of people are doing this. Maybe we could even have our own kind of liquidity that we feed into, like a liquidity pool. Maybe we could just buy some and we'll hold it and use it in a way that we can like delegate rather than let go of it. Right. Um, and also, by the way, it seems like lots of these companies are are using XRP, we might as well hold it in case it goes up in value. And then that creates the the spiral, the spiral up, where you're, you're like, now you've got fewer tokens to use for on-demand liquidity. Right. Um, and people just aren't selling them because it's like, well, there's actually, they're, they're useful not just as uh, their utility as software, but XRP is also useful as an investment hedge. Like right. that, that's the mentality that needs to shift. And in terms of like price predictions, there's there's a whole range of things that are happening. You've got speculation, you've got utility, you've got retail, you've got institution. But these are four var variables that are happening to the to the XRP price, and we as a as a population, the retail, we only have control of the price as far as our emotions allow us. Right. So, the you know I I do think XRP can go to you know eight eleven dollars. In a in a traditional speculation bull run where me and you are involved, right? You know, the retail are involved. That that is the limits, I believe, of the emotional, biological behavior of a person. Right. That's that's the the range in which we can be fearful and greedy. Um, that has nothing to do with the institutions. That's right. I agree that's with that. Purely, that's purely driven by us. We're in control of that. If we all of a sudden had all the confidence in the world and we spread the word so effectively, FOMO would happen with everyone else. The price would go to where it's predictably going to go to um, in that range that I, I mentioned. And then the price will come back down. Right, right. Um, but what hasn't happened in that, and we have to understand what hasn't happened in that time period, is utility, like adoption. That's not happened. Um, you know, you could say ETFs could play a nice role in that, but... And this is a rare occasion for I think for you know for Bitcoin where um, ETF news actually impacted it positively even after the launch. Right. Um, that was interesting, um, but that's not the norm. Usually, talks of ETFs usually trigger reversals. Um, but you know, when <laughs> separating out retail institute retail institutional speculation utility is just really important. So. Um, you know, it all depends on when you think utility is coming around. If utility is not coming in the next year, prepare for a speculation bull run. Gotcha. We're not getting 50K. We're not getting 30K. 
you know, we're, we're go only going in the confines of where our, bio our biology manifests into decision making, fear and greed, and we have a range that that can work in within. Right. Um, if you believe that uh, institutions are going to get in in the next, you know, let's say seven years, then it changes wildly because now it's like, well, now there's lots of other variables. Like, how much are people going to buy? Is the escrow is the escrow XRP actually already allocated to big banks? Mm. You know, like what what is what? There's so many variables that it's really quite impossible. And that's why you have to make models of how this how this stuff works. Like, okay, if we model it this way with like a the pipeline flow model, and this is what Val Hill did, um, they're just trying to trying to remove the noise and focus in on models. Right. Um, how could the price get to these numbers? And certainly, when you look at all the different models, there's eight different models, and the average of those models is sixteen thousand dollars. It's like, well, you know, we're not looking at any one model as a as a guide, but collectively they can indicate where this thing's going so it's it's all about time frames you know the institutions aren't getting in this year right it, no like not it at is, all not at all no so I, I would really try to tie in timelines for everyone in terms of what the the what's, what do you call them i've forgotten what you call them now like the the g20 right the g20 timelines with cbdc's like legislation all has to be done by the time those cbdc's are out um, that's all happening between 2027 and 2030. So to, it, it seems logical for me, if there was going to be a big upheaval in the system, it would be around that time. Um, but who know, I mean, ultimately, no one knows. No one's ever guessed time before accurately. It, we're all just guessing and stabbing in the dark, but we're, you know, we're, we're doing it based on noises that we're hearing in the dark. You know? exactly. so we, we have some level of guidance. Um, but it's, it's, ultimately, it's impossible to know. Yeah. Uh, but I think we just have to differentiate between uh, what what it, what truly is a price driver, which is taking tokens out of circulation and keeping them there. Right. We don't have the power to do that. Institutions do. So what are the factors that lead up to an institution wanting to do that? Right. Well, they need to see it used at scale, and they need to see other businesses get excited about it. Um, and that's where we are. Yeah, no, that's brilliant. That's brilliant. And I agree with you. I think, you know, as long as uh, I think there's going to be a lot of frustrating people because and I think, you know, like you said, yeah, we can get, you know, have some uh, price action as, you know, we, in, we enter these different bull runs or whatever, and it's going to follow the crypto market. But I think once institutional adoption um, starts utilizing uh, XRP for what it was created for, then at that point, I think it detaches itself. But until then, I think it's going to be a lot of frustrating people. I think People see two or three dollars. I made a video not too long ago with uh, with a friend of mine, Edo Farina. And I said I think most people are gonna miss the opportunity or miss that 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 uh, flip the light switch moment. Which I don't. I think when they when when you hear Rosie Real said you know say uh, uh, the the train has left the station, or you hear Brad Garlinghouse says the flip of the switch uh, moment. I believe that that's when institutional adoption uh, steps in. And until then, I think it's just gonna be a lot of frustrated people. Yep. Yeah. And and we we will actively work within the confines of fear and greed of the retail person. I agree. Um, and so that, that's where we are. Um, I think, you know, we just, the, the, the true alt season where things are going as we've seen them go before, that hasn't happened yet. So yeah. reserve any, I know it's hard because it's frustrating to be in this for, the, for so long and it's not moving. I know yeah. it is because yeah. I've lived it. Yeah. Um, twice. <laughs> um, you know, it, it'll, it, XRP's, never been left behind you know in in like a full scale run before right um so just have the confidence that that's going to happen and frustratingly it happens last yeah. um but you know <laughs> patience everyone and, and and more patience than anything else because it's, it's, i know for people they get frustrated you see this coin that always maintains within the top six everything else is moving you got you know, Pepe coin, Shakaka coin, crap coin, uh. all these coins. I mean, and it's, it's funny because you got all these coins that are doing, you know, 100x, 1000x, all these different things. And then, you know, this one coin that everyone's got this, you know, crazy hope for and and, and really represented or, or connected one of the greatest companies in the space, Ripple. And it's just not performing. But again, it's about knowing what you hold. And I think the, the better student you are and the more you do your research, the more you understand and uh, this, this is, like you said, it's a patient game. And I, th I really think it's going to be the next three to five years that are really uh, um, 
uh, shed light on what's happening. Just you, you got lawsuits, you got all these things. And I think that's the narrative that people forget. No other asset. I'm not saying no other asset won't have those issues, but for right now, no other asset asset has had the fight that uh, XRP and Ripple's had to deal mm -hmm. with. So yeah, for yeah. sure. Um, I mm -hmm. have a question for you in regards to something that we're all very, very excited about, which is this uh, documentary with Fruition uh, Productions. Um, and uh, I'm really excited about it, especially when I see the lineup. They, you know, they got John Deaton. They've got you. They've got uh, Zach Rector. They've got um, Echo. They've got, I mean, all these amazing Molly. And, and so you know it's going to be special, especially you talk about all these. When you take that many amazing people, then that, that documentary has to be phenomenal. Uh, what what is that? Number one, what did it mean for you to get that call to be a part of that? And then number two, how important is that documentary going to be to the crypto space and what it's uh, being created for? Um, well, I, I've been I've been used to being uh, not treated let's say as part of the of the community mm -hmm. I, um, I you know my reasons for saying that is you know you've, you've got these like big posters that people make on Twitter where they're like look at all the XRP community and there's all the all the people on there and I'm like <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah I know exactly what you're talking wait, about <laughs> where are we where I'm are not we? on there <laughs> like I'm not 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 to be like right, big right, headed but right. like I should I should probably be on there as one I, of the I, vocal I people. Think, I think that's up. dated, bro. I think that's kind of yeah. dated before you start having your big surge. Because I looked and I'm right. like, wait a minute, they're, they've got people on there. I don't know if you ever looked. I'm just like, who the hell is this? Do they? Yeah, exactly, exactly, exactly. <laughs> yeah. um, and so you know, I'm used to that kind of thing happening. Right. Um, and so I fully expected that this would go on. You know, the the filming of this would go on, and I would just be one of the spectators. You know. Um. And you know, kind of okay with that as well. Um, but then, you know, they gave me the message and said, "Do you want to be in it?" I was like, "Okay, yeah, I'd love to be in it. Like, wow. I'll come, I'll come to LA. Wow. Like, uh, I don't mind because it was, you know, I, I was kind of just. It's an opportunity to to be part of something. It's also for me as well with my production brain. Like, right. what an opportunity to see a full on production happen. Um, because I can I can learn all of that stuff and apply it into my own what I'm doing right um but the the imposter syndrome that I felt was from that moment all the way through to five seconds before I filmed wow wow and and is, there's even a video of me online where I'm like I don't know like this feels so weird for me to be here I don't know like Molly's here like this Jimmy's right. been talking right like these are these are brilliant people very right, brilliant. yeah yeah what on earth am I what on earth am I doing here that I really honestly, truly felt like that all the way up until the moment where I had to go up in front of the cameras and start talking. Right. Um, and then, you know, as time went on throughout the two days of shooting, I, I was like, wait, I do have a role in this. Right. Because, you know, you've got, you've got developers that will talk and they're like talking about code and stuff. And it's like, well, oh, that's, it's not accessible to the everyday person. Then you've got people talking about ETHgate and that conspiracy. And it's like, well, that's a lot of information all at once for someone who doesn't know anything about this. And there's like maybe lots of lawyer talk or, you know, names of senators that people won't know in the UK, you know, right, <laughs> we right. don't know all the politicians in the US. Right. Um, and then I, I, it always came as like realization for me where I was like, ah, I can explain things so easy that I could explain XRP to someone walking in the street like right now and they would get it. Right. Like that's that's my that's my thing. That's my you know, that's my wheelhouse. And so as we were filming, it was like, you know, I'm I'm there explaining ISO. I'm explaining payments, I'm explaining how money works. You know, that that's my wheelhouse. And so I realized really if you look objectively, and taking myself out of the picture, if you look right. objectively, who are you gonna get to talk about this stuff in the simplest way? Well, you're not going to pull someone from the street who's never talked about XRP in public before. Absolutely, yeah. Um, you're going to find someone who uh, does it as their job. They literally talk about this thing as their job. Right. And they're in the space of educating rather than the space of like sharing the news that's happened. Right. Well, that that's me. And it may, there may be one, two, or three of us in the world that do that. Now, did they give and you so, did, yes. they, did they give you bullet points, or did they just kind of like tell you, hey, well? Kind of, because they need to. They need to guide you because, you know, when you're, you're standing in front of the camera, there's 14 people there, like okay. just watching you in silence, waiting right. for you to talk. Exactly right. 
that you've got to have some guidance. Okay, gotcha. But okay. it was it was very they they not at any moment told me what I need to talk about. Wow. They said, you know, what what do you feel most comfortable sharing or educating on or explaining? Okay. I, I like gave that. them a list of things that that's I'm awesome. like most that I'm best at and they right. built a scene around me. Wow, that's awesome. That's awesome. Um and you know, so it, it was very much like you know, the long sh- the big short. Right. Where you've got like the movies happening, and then Margot Robbie comes on and she explains something that has just been talked about in the in the film <laughs> that people wouldn't understand. Right. I was like the Margot Robbie. That's funny. So you know, everyone else does their expert insights and complicated talking. Then I'm like, hey, this right. is how it is for a ten year old. <laughs> right. Right. You know. Now, and I think that's that's the space I feel in the market. Now has it has it hit you yet? Uh, you're done. I'm sure you had all the nerves in the world. I mean, I've I've been in front of the camera most of my life and stuff like that, but from the time that you were on your way there and then you obviously completed it, have it, has it like really sunk in that this is going to be something that I, I believe is going to be like documenting Bitcoin. It's going to be something that people are going to look back 10, 15 years from now and go, Oh my God, that's that. Because I heard from, uh, I heard Molly say it was first class all the way. This is something super special. Uh, has it kicked into you yet? As far as just knowing you're going to be a part of something that's going to be looked at as a very important part of history. Um, c- certainly as I, as I went to it, I didn't, I, I guess I wasn't understanding the importance. I thought, oh, I film all the time. Like I have a production crew and everything that, you know, I've worked on, on, on these sets before. Right. Then we got there and I was like, oh, this is actually really, <laughs> like, these guys are pros. This is really good. Next, next level. <laughs> yeah. It was, it was a whole, whole new level. It was like almost like movie production. It was right. very good. Um, and then, you know, conversations with Molly, at, you know, at dinner and stuff. And I'm like, and she's kind of communicating these things to me like do you realize this is this is a really this is a really important thing that's being made here yeah. i was like well tell me tell me more about what you're thinking right right so like, this this could reach millions of people yeah big time. like big time um and so yes that's important for cryptocurrency i have the, i have a theory that this will be launched around when fomo is existing in the market yeah i think nature and and uh the universe has a way of of aligning events with times in the market like uh like th- there was a whole thing about how Na- is, i think it was nancy pelosi where she had basically bought in insider trading all these stocks and then the day that the fibonacci retracement tool the the price of whatever it was reached the 4.236 right at the top was the day she announced Government officials can't hold any stocks. We're selling them all right now, right, right. so that we're, we're being absolutely transparent. Right. <laughs> like the Fibonacci scale doesn't know anything about Nancy Pelosi. Right, exactly. Just, just the just the same way is that the market doesn't know when the documentary is going to be out. Right. But I bet they align. I bet they align. They line up. So like you've got the FOMO of everyone retail people who didn't know about XRP, uh, and and then Netflix launches this one of uh, uh, a show about a cryptocurrency all at the same time where everyone's talking about crypto and you know but i still think that all works within the confines of fear and greed yeah between seven and eleven dollars it doesn't push it up to like fifty dollars kind of thing um but i I think it's a very important thing for crypto in general for sure i think it will play its role in the bull run right um but we cannot deny again that even though more people will be in it this time next time than this time next time right um the market will go up and the market will go down. That's right. Um, so I'm trying not to put too much credence on the on the on the documentary as like a this is gonna change everything. Right. It's gonna be a great opportunity. It's right. gonna be probably play its role in the bull run. But we sh- I think we should leave it like that. Right. Um, rather than getting our hopes up like that it's gonna absolutely change the world. Yeah. And I think I think uh, the two people that are behind it, Chris and Maya, I just you couldn't I, I got to know them after the interview that we did. And we actually became friends. We've been messaging and, and so forth. Um, and um, they kind of told me their story. They, I don't know if you know their per- what an incredible story. I mean, what I, I don't I don't want to say too much about it because they're talking about coming. They asked me to come back on the show and uh, kind of. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, where they can kind of uh, share that story, but what an extraordinary story! So I, I don't know if you can have a better couple behind that project with the type of passion and the success they've had in crypto. A lot of people don't know who they are personally, but man, their journey is amazing. I can't wait for them to tell that story. It's, it's incredible. Yeah, it, they are the right people to do it. That's absolutely, absolutely. for sure. For sure. Um, 
Very, very, also very unbiased. I yeah. really, really yeah. enjoyed that. Yeah. Very inclusive, very community oriented, um, very generous. Right. Um, and, uh, you know, you, there is zero amount of ill intent that you get from them. Right. So, I mean, you're not going to get anyone like that. It's a, they're a dream team. They're the perfect people for the job. Right. And they're doing it well as well. Right. <laughs> like, I don't think people understand the level of like production value that this is going to be delivering. This is right. like any any high quality documentary or film that you've seen on Netflix. Right. It's up, it's up there with that. Right. And I, and I love and I love the fact that they're not doing it just to go post it on some social media. They have big plans for this. And so that's really, yep. really exciting to hear that. Mm -hmm. um, I guess the next question for you would be, uh, as we're, as we're uh, winding down here, is um, where do you see crypto as a whole in the next five years? And I say five years because I, think, I believe 2025 to 2030 is going to be a crazy time uh, in a great way. But, but where do you see crypto in the next? Because obviously you got... A lot of the regulatory stuff, you got a lot of, you know, stuff going on at Congress. You've got a lot of uh, still, I think, this corrupted game of chess being played. Um, and I think it's going to take various uh, uh, things in order to uh, come to fruition for us to see uh, some clarity that we want. I don't know how soon regulatory clarity is going to come. I think there's still this ridiculous game that's being played. How long that game's being played, I don't know. I think maybe it clears up more in 2025. Uh, I definitely don't think anything's going to be cleared up uh, more or less in, in 2024. But I think 25 to 30 is going to be the sweet spot. What's your What's your take on that? Well, from a macro perspective, I think, yeah, 25 to 30 seems to be really influential because that's when all of the G20 timelines are ending. Right. Um, to do with retail CBDCs and wholesale CBDCs. Um, you know, I, I think crypto is going to be subject to bull runs and bear runs. Um, so attention will vary with that. Right. But for the next three years, I think the next big thing is going to be blockchain, mm. not crypto. And we're not talking about speculation here. We're talking about, oh, a actually, the estate, the real estate agent down the road is actively tokenizing right. his houses. Like, right. that's the stuff that's being built right now. And right. I know it from firsthand experience because I'm talking with those people. Right. And they're all starting to integrate blockchain, not crypto. You know, and I, and I don't, I, I don't yeah. want to cut you off, but that's so important what you just said. Because up until this point, Lewis, it's been so much speculation. Most of these coins really don't have any you know, factual use case, it's all hype, it's all speculation. And I think at some point you're right on the money where people are going to say, okay, you know what, enough of this, boom. And it goes into that that next phase. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Um, I, I just see right now, just from being on the front line, if you will, people are building. Right. Like things are being built right now. You know, um, companies that focus on tokenization of real world assets, they're being built right now. Right. Um, and so... From a business side, the focus is all going to be blockchain. Um, that will have effects on crypto because tokens are used on these blockchains, right? It's up to us to decide what we think is going to go up in value and how it's going to go up in value and why. Um, so once you've got something that you know you want to hold, like XRP, because you understand its use in the blockchain, right? now the focus should be, let's look at companies that are actually doing things in the real world and crypto is a, is a byproduct of what they're really trying to do, which is like Ripple. Right. And to look for more like that, because, you know, the speculation world is really a game of winners and losers. Right. Um, majority lose. And, that, you know, so you can operate in that in that space, which I think we have operated in and we've we've hedged our bets right. in ways that we think is more calculated than speculation. Um, but ultimately, in the background, companies are being involved with blockchain and we have to assume that an increase in adoption of blockchain will increase the value of the tokens underneath if they have real asset if they have real utility makes sense makes sense um i, I got a couple more questions um when you hear people say the majority of the crypto assets that are out there and i mean they're probably tens of thousands of crypto won't be around. They said they've given numbers like 80 to 90% won't be around in the long term. Um, your thoughts on that? Well, I, I really, I do. I think it's, I think it's about the date of establishment. Right. So let's, let's say we have a bull run in June. 
right. this year. And it's like the peak of the cycle is in, in June. If you've got companies popping up in June or July that, or, or May, sorry, probably not the best. Because you have to you have to analyze if you're if you're making a business and you're you're kind of you've just created a, a token, what is your true intention at that time of the cycle? Right. It's probably driven by hype promise right. of making easy money <laughs> right. that's those aren't necessarily the attributes in a company that you want to be involved with so right. you know it's very easy find a token if it was made in you know late 2017 yeah. their intentions probably weren't great but if no, it's still around no. they survived two bear mar two bear markets right, so maybe right, right but if if you're getting companies that are built in the bottom of the bear market or like on the way down and they're still building it's like mm, they might not necessarily be here just for the game, That's like right. the financial game. They might actually be building something here. Right. So it's just a little a step in the checklist of things to do when you're looking at a token. I think is the establishment date gotcha. says a lot yeah. about a company. I agree. I agree. Now, are you uh, planning on um, attending XRP Las Vegas? Um. Yeah. It, well, yes. It's a quite an expensive trip that one because Vegas <laughs> is ex for some reason expensive to get to. Yeah. Um. Versus like New York. Okay. Um, and I'm also going to bring my wife, so okay, it's awesome. like double. <laughs> awesome, awesome. So um, w w it's not confirmed yet. Um, I don't know if I'm going to be like on stage or anything. Right. So there's a few things to figure out, but I know Brad wants me to go last time and I didn't. Right. Um, it's, yeah, to be determined, but I'm leaning towards yes. Okay. Well, I hope to see you uh, and your wife there. My wife and I will be there as well. Um, yeah. Let's see here. Um at this point, man, I, I just want to thank you. Uh, I think from this point, just just kind of let people know about your uh, YouTube, where they can find you, your ex and all that stuff. Um, let them know where they can find you and um, why, you know, why should they listen? To, I know why they should listen to you. You're, you're brilliant. Uh, <laughs> but uh, what can they expect if they tune into, uh, you know, I think you're very authentic in what you uh, do. Um, very factual. Uh, I, I've never seen you shill anything. Um, and that's why I enjoy watching your show. So uh, let people know where they can find you. Uh, well, kind of if, before I do that, I think, you know, I might not be your person, like your your person to watch um, is, is one thing I want to put out there. Everyone's got a way that their brain works and the way that their heart receives information. That's right. So um, sure, check me out. You just type Lewis Jackson into the into YouTube. But I think what's more important to me than you watching my channel is for you to be aware of how you receive information. So, you know, I do come at things from a more simple approach. Um, and maybe I'm your guy for that. Maybe maybe the British accent does something for like, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Everyone's That's different. That's but you know, <laughs> this is why the XRP documentary is super interesting because you know, people will watch that right. and you'll do your and your part will be on. And they'll be like, oh man, I really like James. Like I really want to watch him. Right. And they don't want to watch anyone else. <laughs> like they, they could even think, oh that Lewis guy is annoying to me. And that's completely fine, but you found your person. Right. And so, yeah, I'd love to be the, the person that you come to watch. But um, really, the important thing is that you find your actively try to find the person that you connect with. Love it. Love um, it. That's more important to me. Brilliant. Brilliant. Anything else you want to add, my friend, before we uh, let you go? No, I think uh, you're doing a tremendous job. Thank you. Um, I think there's uh, obviously you've gone through a life of success so far, but I think the the days of even more promise are ahead um just even based on this short interaction we've had and online um i think you can go i think you can go a long way if you wanted to I so i appreciate you. what you're doing the positivity is a really important thing for me which is why i accepted this in the first place thank you very much um like i don't really go on podcasts but i do when i know someone's spirit is in the right place so wow. that means a lot um, brother very, Good work. very honored, and I appreciate you, and look forward to see meeting you and the wife here in Las Vegas. That would be great. I'd love to. Okay, brother. Appreciate you. Thank you so much, you guys. Lewis Jackson. Thank you so much, my brother.